Hey everyone, we're a couple of minutes late, I think, but uh, technical difficulties aside, uh, I'm here and I'm going to be joined by Stuart and Gareth um, very soon to, to talk you this uh, this week's show. We're going to be previewing the Warrington uh, episode and we're also going to be probably looking back a little bit on the Huddersfield game and talking George Williams. Gareth, I think, is on your screen. Um, and we're waiting for Stu. For Stu. We'll, we'll see if he joins us. Gareth, how are you doing? You well? Yeah, really good. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, really good. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah, cool. I think whilst we've got you here, then we'll um, we'll start with your thoughts, I suppose, on the Huddersfield game. I mean, not great, was it? No. Uh, no, it's, it's not really. I, I'm, I'm a bit lost for words with it. It's... Well, a bit like the coach, really. You know, everything seems to be in place. It just seems to be out on the pitch. Um, something just doesn't. It just doesn't seem right. We almost seem a little bit. We seem a little bit clunky in attack. Our defence doesn't seem great. And you know, to be beaten at home by Huddersfield. No disrespect to Huddersfield. They deserve to win. But if you looked at the two comparable team sheets, then you know you would have said Wigan. Wig on paper, Wigan should win. I know sport isn't. You know, isn't about what's on paper and it's about on the day. Um, but I just, you know, I fear that that, that if, we'd have, if we'd have beaten Huddersfield, that could have been the result to turn our season around. As it is now, it, you know, you think, when are we going to win a game? If we can't beat them, when are we going to win a game, you know? and, and well, Exactly. I, I wasn't. I wasn't for pushing the panic button after London, but I sort of said at last week's show, let's wait and see what happens against Huddersfield. And, uh... I, 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 I saw something in the week that said something that said, you know, is it as bad as Ian Millwood? Is it 2006 all over again? And no, I don't think it's quite that bad. I'm going to say yet, but then is it going to get any worse? I, I, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I mean, we got fourteen six. Obviously, we lost. Uh, we got to six all, didn't we? Did you think at that point we were maybe going to have a chance? Nice little try from Escaray. Someone play of instincts as well with Lulu Eyes kick. Yeah, and and Escaray, Escaray's been the player we've sort of been crying out for that for him that kind of creative spark that just you know speed speed round the opposition line and we we you know and then like you say you just thought because don't forget Huddersfield came into it into the game it was two teams in a, in a really bad run of form and you perhaps thought yeah. at home if we got on top perhaps we could have been the team to have gone on and won the game but as it was they they sort of dug in and oh, fair play to them you know it's it yeah I, I, and, then, and then sort of I, you know I, I didn't expect anything different from Lamb when he come out at the end but you know he sort of really sums up the thoughts of the supporters like we, 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 we don't really know We've all got a theory. As to why, you know, we've all got a theory as to why we're struggling. Um, you know, obviously we've lost players. We've lost. Oh, what's, what's your What's your theory then? What do you think the biggest factor is at the moment? Do you think it's the uh, made a lot of excuses for the team, hasn't he, so far this season? Hangover from winning the trophies. Hangover from winning from playing against the Roosters. Um, new team gelling together. He's made lots of excuses. So, what do you think that we're yeah, I, I I don't know. It, it's it's difficult. I think it's a it's a multitude of all those factors that, that that you mentioned there. I don't think it's a hangover from winning the trophy. I think it's the fact that you've lost key players in key, in key areas. Um, you've got Hardacre that's coming in that hasn't played a game competitively competitively for nearly eighteen months, and you've got a new coach with new ideas. It, it was always going to take time to gel. Um, we haven't had we've had. A, a pretty difficult start as well. Playing Saints first up wasn't easy. Um, and yeah, I, I I just think in those tight games where it could have gone either way, it perhaps hasn't gone our way. And sports, it, confidence is a massive thing in sport. If you get on a losing run, it's very, very difficult to sort of arrest that that, that losing run. So I think it's it's a combination of a lot of the factors that you, that you described there. Um, yeah. We had that comment there about... Um... We had that comment there about lack of team spirit. And do you know what? That kind of showed up, didn't it, in the Huddersfield game with the um, the, the particular instance that stands up. Hey, Tim Stewart, we're just talking about the Huddersfield call cool we were. We'll bring you in your yeah. thoughts on that yeah. in a sec. Blah, blah, blah. But we're just yeah. talking yeah. about a lack of a lack of team potentially and um, and the confidence issue there. But during the team spirit thing, I mean, have you ever really seen 
players calling each other out and falling yeah. out of each other on the yeah, pitch but, so yeah. much. Like what we saw yeah. when O'Loughlin couldn't take mm-hmm. that pretty crap pass, to yeah. be fair, from um, some Sam Powell in the middle of the first. That's true. Do you think there was a lack of team spirit? Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. There's definitely some going on. It's like, I don't know if you noticed, but I've noticed more like um, matches I've seen on Sky that I haven't attended the DW. There's a few players that's like, heads are down. There's no respect. That, there doesn't seem to be the thing. Because I can tell you years ago, when I used to coach under nines, when you were sitting talking with them kids at half time, just to brief talk to them, all of them were faced on you talking. And there's not one, there was about four or five that had their heads down in that changing room and they just weren't interested. And I'm thinking, come on, man, get a grip. You know what I mean? You, you play for the shirt. You know what yeah. I mean? Do, 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 you, do not... you think, do you think, um, um, go on, Gareth. No, I, I'm saying, do you think that's not just a confidence thing? Do you think that, you know, that... A confidence thing, and I don't think there's a there's a problem as in players are falling out because they've fallen out. If you uh, explain that very well, but I think it's because just because we're I know we're, what you mean we're not winning games, are we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you're always going to have a disappointing changing room. I mean, if we had gone in at half time and we were winning twenty by twenty odd points against Huddersfield, I think the body language from the players would be difficult. Uh, it would be different, I say. Um, yeah. but this is where Whereas we'd had we'd had a couple of injuries, hadn't we? We'd had um, you know, so we'd had Mark our wingers Freddy, go off. Yeah. We'd had yeah. things like that, and they were the heads were down. They they couldn't complete a set, could we? We we were garbage. We couldn't complete a set, and we couldn't make a tackle. And I think that gets us through to the viral the viral George Williams video. Now, at least oh, it's something oh, to oh, laugh yeah. at yeah. a little bit. But, but George Williams wasn't the only person. I mean, Liam Marshall injured himself making making an embarrassment of a tackle attempt. Um, and just before that, he'd made a similar kind of sh- shocking effort trying to stop a try. And, and and those two weren't the only ones, were they? Two. Defence, Stu, do you think that's across the board? or And, and does the Williams yeah. one just highlight it? I think the defence is the main thing. You know what I mean? I think we, when we had Mr. Wayne there, that that was what he always thrived on, didn't he? You know, come on, forwards, it's always strummed into them. You know what I mean? Defence wins games. Um, and I, I think, I'm not knocking our defence coach, but, you know, it makes you wonder now, eh? you know what I mean? And you, and you think, well, why can we go from basically so many months after that awesome defence? Okay, we've lost Sam, we've lost Sutton, we've lost Batty, okay. But... When you look at the core of it, there isn't that many. They, they've still got the core of our team. Do you know what I mean? There's only three or four gone. So what's you know? It just makes yeah. you wonder. I I I I I point the finger as much at the players as all the stuff about you know slagging Lamb and and that sort of stuff. I, I kind of think Lamb hasn't done anything to turn these players into players who don't who don't. Um, we all came across you guys. The stands was our defensive line was walking up two steps and then stopping, and then like giving their attackers basically options. That's what's what we saw against London games too. And Lamb is sending them out. So players could overturn override that. Working shouldn't they get up and and on Lamb? A line a bit harder, and we're maybe missing something like that at the moment. Um, I, but like, like you said, Gareth, if Lamb can't put his finger on it, I'm not sure how we as fans uh-huh. are going to put our finger on it. No, and, and shall just, we move on then? Can I just add one more thing in terms of? Yeah. That? Do, you, do you think the players are just thinking, are actually thinking what is going to happen in the terms that? Well, this guy's just keeping the seat warm for someone else for a year, and and could that be a factor? And then you have Edwards that came out and made some like throwaway comments, really, wasn't it, the other day, saying, "Oh, I might, I might stay with the rug with rugby union for another year." You, I just wonder whether that it's just a, like I said earlier, it's just a culmination of a massive amount of factors that are contributing to yeah. the fact that it's it's been a, a real patchy start to the season. 
it's unsettling, and obviously, if it's unsettling to the point where lockers is falling out with fans, as Andy's reporting there, I did, I've not seen anything about that until Andy's no. message there. But gosh, that's not what not what we're used to from no. a consummate professional like that. He's falling out with players, he's falling out with fans. That's a worry. Um, right, we're going to talk George Williams. We talked a little bit about that that tackle, tackle in inverted commas, but we're going to talk a little bit about George Williams. Stu, I know you've got strong views on oh, this at the yeah. moment. I'm going to come. I'm going to come to you last, if that's okay. Uh, We're going to build I up to you on this one. I would have known. I would have known. I would have known, mate. Good have been. So let's start. Let's let's start with just summing up what we've learned this week, basically, from the mole, who's a very credible reporter down under, and it's been backed up by our friend Phil Wilkinson with his reports as well. That basically it's a done deal. George Williams to Canberra, three-year deal. We'll be receiving a transfer fee, and we'll be playing in the uh, for the Green Machine in in 2020 alongside all his former colleagues. Um, Gareth, let's start with you. What what do you make of this? We we knew it'd happen eventually, but are you sad to hear it's happening? Uh, well, I'm not surprised, like you say. I think it's something that we yeah. expected. Um, I mean, there's no smoke without fire. The rumours have been circulating for a good number of years now that that uh, George Williams would or interested uh, clubs in the NRL. Am I disappointed? I don't know. Williams has always been one of their Marmite players, hasn't he? Which has really divided uh, opinions, you know, on the terraces. And, 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 and us, yeah. us, us guys that do this have all had differing views of Williams. I just find he's too inconsistent. He'll have a good game or he'll have a good period in a game. And then he just goes missing. Um, his kicking game's too inconsistent as well. I would say that if we can get a transfer, you never want to see one of your own homegrown players go, but if we could get a sizable transfer fee and and a player that we feel or the club feel is um, sort of an adequate replacement, then I just think we just let him go, really, to be honest. Um, yeah. You know, well, I mean... Well, it, yeah, that, that is a, a big part of the argument, isn't it? We're getting a transfer fee. If he doesn't want to be there as well, you should never stand in the way of a player that doesn't want to be there. And I don't think Wigan as a club have ever done that to any of the players have ever wanted to go. Um, I just, you say about the tackle, I saw today that I think it was Fox Sports did a really sarcastic, Fox Sports in Australia did a really, really sarcastic post about it, basically saying, why do, why would a club want to sign a player that can't even make a tackle? So, you know, I... I, I well, I, to I, be I, honest, they need to watch every single game that George Williams has played for Wigan because he's the best defensive halfback in the competition. And if people think he isn't, then people don't watch how many good tackles he makes in games. But um, anyway, <laughs> so, right. So th- selling him now means we get m- more money. If we let him go at the end of this year, it will be, we can get yeah. how he wants to go. If we let him go a year after, force an option, smaller a transfer fee and after that there's no transfer fee and win points so to me the point is clearly his head turned and even adrian lamb said he's not playing to his full potential right now because he's a bit all but i love george williams i'm a bit different to maybe some other people i think he's probably the most skillful and talented halfback that we've seen come through in more than a generation at, at wigan um I think he's I think he's got loads of skill and talent. He's got flaws. He's definitely got flaws. He's the most talented player uh, in the competition, arguably, but he's one of the dumbest rugby players in the competition in terms of he doesn't read the game. He only sees immediate things and reacts to them, and he's got so much skill and ability that he can react to them, but they don't always come off because he doesn't actually see the bigger picture in front of him. Kind of that's the inconsistency, Gareth. But I, I, I'm going to be sad to see him go because he's a player I've loved watching. He's probably... Um, he's, he ranked in the top four or five in try assists in the league since he permanently became halfback, which was, what, the 2014 season, I think. In that time, we've won two grand finals with him at halfback. We've got to four grand finals with him at halfback. You know, a Challenge Cup final. Too. I think you've got to say there's there's been quality produced by him over all of that time. And I'm going to be sad to see him go, and we need to bring in a top, top draw replacement. That's my take on it. And I've worked through this from your sort of half and half, Gareth, to my I love George Williams, to your your position on it, Stu. So let us know how you feel about George Williams' potential move to Canberra at the end of the season. Right. What's concerning me, right? Everybody's on about marquee signing, right? Mr. Eric Pollard look alike, our chairman. We all know we know he's tight, right? Let's get this right. He's tight. He's tight to that crab. End of. 
I don't care if he sees this video. I wouldn't tell the man that the match is tight. Right. My concern is he'll bring Josh Woods in. No disrespect to Josh Woods. I like the player. He's a good, he's a good lad. Right. We'll bring him as a marquee. That's what I see. That kind of quality of calibre coming to the club at the minute. Because to me, I'm sorry, but that our chairman, if I ever see him, oh, God knows what I would do with him, I tell you. Because just what? lately, oh, man, honest. It's just, oh. Don't no, get me I know it's rant, a, rant, please, rant, we, we don't want to get... <laughs> We don't want you banned for menacing behaviour, but John Williams himself. So we'll talk about replacements in a, in a second. But um, <laughs> George Williams himself, what, what? How do you feel about George Williams? Will you be? Do you think it's time for him to go? Do you? I do. You, I do. Yeah, because he's getting predictable. Eh? Come on, you know what I mean. He's putting these little chips through. Do you know what I mean? And the door standing there. Oh, here we go again. George, George, so predictable, Williams. Let's put a little dink in there. Eh? You know what I mean? Let's drop back. Everybody knows. Do you know what I mean? It, it, to me, it's the same thing. It's so predictable. And you can see, like, you know where we sit, Mark. People's like so frustrated. What are you doing? You're doing the same thing again. Do something different. Do you know what I mean? What, what I can't understand is, right? Yeah. Do you know this need? You, you know when Sneed does that cross angle kick? He'd done that once against Leeds, right? And we scored, Sargis and scored. He hasn't done it against, he hasn't done it since. They've done that cross field kick, that, that, that little. Well, he, that, that he tried one against and Huddersfield and it was not a garbage, yeah, to be honest. Right. And, and he scored. So there's the proof <laughs> in the pudding, isn't it? You know what I mean? Stop the chips and give us some fish. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we've scored a, we, uh, you know, uh, England and. And Eng England as well as Wigan have scored plenty of tries off the back of those kicks in recent times. So, um, so it's it's worked a lot of times. But I, I get there's a lot of people that are frustrated with him. And you're you're speaking the view that a lot of fans think. I think Stu there on that one. So you know, thanks for sharing that that no, different no, view. Let's talk another quickly. Another we're going to get some money yeah. in. We're we're going to get some money in for this the transfer fee. We don't know what it's going to be, but yeah. it's we know it's going to be above three three figures. We, we can say uh, six figures. Sorry, it's hundred k yeah. plus, yeah. isn't it? So it's enough money to pay the wages for a year or so for a a, a good player. And yeah. Philip's asking yeah. the question: Who replaces him? I've got a list, a short list here of of three names, right? That I want your comments on, and then any names you want to add to it. So we know that Mal uh, Maloney wants to come over to Super League from the NRL and he's you know only recently finished playing in rep games down under he's, he's definitely pushing on in age a little bit but is a is a high caliber player who for a year or two might just be the marquee signing people might be entertained by then we could go back into the market for Jackson Hastings he's only on a one year deal at Salford if the NRL don't come calling can we throw some money to convince him this time around to come to us and then the other one the wild card one for me but I've seen a few people mention it do we go and get Sam Tompkins back and put him in the halfbacks as our sort of leader on the field there? You know, someone with a genuine rugby brain um, who, who also is a leader, shows those skills. They're my three names. Uh, I'll come to you, Gareth, first. Any of them you like and who would you add to it? Jackson Hastings for me. Without, yeah, I, I was, I was yeah. a little bit disappointed yeah. when we didn't sign him this season. Obviously, did, did we go for Jared Sammet instead of him? Maybe, maybe not. I'm no, not sure. I'm quite not quite no. sure whether we did or we didn't. But <laughs> I'm just, sorry, I'm just laughing at Mathers coming up from Spencer. <laughs> um, but yeah, cheerleaders I, need not apply. But I, I like I like Jackson Hastings. He's done well at Salford. He seems to be well liked by the club, well liked by his uh, by his teammates as well. I think he would. I think yeah. he would be a good a good fit for us. I, I would be adverse to getting someone in from the NRL because it's very – it either works or it, or it's a disaster. And I don't think we can take that kind of risk. The halfback is such a key area. And I think it's one of the reasons why we have struggled so far this season, that if we're going to get someone in to replace Williams – and we've got, we're going to have a decent amount of money to play with as well because don't forget, not only have yeah. we got the transfer fee, we've got his wages as well. I mean, he is still a marquee signing. Is, is that correct? Is, William Salamaki player? But yeah, his current wages are, are, are more than 175000 a year. Key deal, of course, it only counts 75 k towards the things will get moved around that that way or not. Um, so so you, you're basically someone, but it should be someone from Super League in your yeah, eyes. Yeah, I, I think so. Unless, I mean, unless you've got someone from Australia that's played Super League and knows and, and has proved themselves in Super League. But 
I think it's very difficult to get that star player from Australia to come over and play in our competition nowadays. Yeah, about Sam Tompkins, I think that ship sailed now. Well, we thought it sailed once before, but I, I think coming back for a for a for another time, I, I can't see that happening. To be honest, what about you, Stu? What about Danny Richardson? Hastings for you as well? No, well, yeah, Hastings. But Danny Richardson. In... You know what I mean? What, what nice wild card shout. That's a good shout, actually. Why not? You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't have a I don't have an answer to why not. Brag, but then again, he's a great player. <laughs> there's a lot of people. Is he got people, the right characteristics? I'm not sure. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people that I know. They all keep saying to me, "What about um, oh, the, the kid from Auckland Warriors? What do you call him? Sean oh, Johnson? Johnson? Yeah." And I'm like, "No, no, I wouldn't." Uh, you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. If he get bums on seats and it fill fill maybe fill DW a bit, but you know what I mean? I don't think. If it was me personally, it's like Gareth said, Jackson Hastings, because I don't know if you've seen the match against Catalan, the man was brilliant, honest yeah. to God. And mm, then it, Sam, no disrespect to Sam, I like a good, good lad in that, but it made him look like a kid. He was just everywhere. He was organising them, he was pulling the strings. It was, oh, it was great. That Jackson Hastings, and you just think, hmm, so could he could have done for us. You know what I mean? But fair enough, not. yeah. The the worry on um, Richardson is kind of a is on the outer and say it's why would we take a Saints reject almost it's already put him under, well, under pressure to yeah. fail from the we've done it with Gary Connolly we've took Joe Greenwood so come on you know why not give me give well, me I, th I think Greenwood chose to leave them and Connolly we paid a big load of money for it was a bit different circumstance than him not getting in the team there but I, I take what you're saying I take what you're saying definitely um, and if he turned around to be our version of Sean Long and gave us a load of uh, success against them for yes. years to come then we'd all take that won't we boys oh definitely <laughs> Right, let's talk. Let's talk Warrington game. Uh, Huddis yeah, Warrington game. Sorry, that's what we're here to uh, to talk about, really, as well. Um, selection issues. Let's start with that. Tau has got a three-game ban. Um, we've also got Marshall. He's out for up to six weeks. Uh, I'm looking at my sheet of paper here. Uh, Manfredi and Powell. They're both out short term. A couple of weeks, maybe up to four weeks for those two. But we've got Greenwood and Sargentson back in. They're the big injury returns from, from last week's squad. Partington and Davidson, they're in the Davies, sorry, they're in the nineteen. Um, so, uh, Stu, I'll come to you first. I think there's a couple of qu selection questions, isn't there? There's who gets the second wing spot opposite Davies, and there's who starts at scrum half alongside Williams, isn't there? So, um, who, who do you choose there in those positions? Well, <laughs> me. I would stick Sam at dinner. I'm, I know a lot of people are like, oh, what are you on about? Look at give him a go. You know what I mean? We're not, we're not, we're not hiding to nothing, aren't we? You know what I mean? We're not going to hide into nothing. So I'd just stick him in, give him a go. If 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 he's rubbish, fair enough. We, we, we know we're going to, whatever. But if he's brilliant, that, that, that's the game to do it. You know what I mean? We're not hiding to nothing, aren't yeah. we, at the minute? So just put him in, give him a go. Put, put Tommy at number nine. Fair enough. Go. Yeah. Uh, what, about, what about you, Gareth? Who... Let's talk wing. Who would you have in there? Because there's been conversations about having it's basically between Esquire and Hankinson to get that final spot in the back five, isn't it? So where would you go with that? Oh, I, I really don't know, to be honest. It, it, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, it, it, it's really difficult. It, it's yeah, but I've just seen that come up on the on the screen there. Bullock on the wing. You know, it's, it's not a bad shout. Uh, uh, Race you off. might defend a bit better than what we've been doing. I, I would say that the, the the back issue isn't as much as the half back issue. I, I, I'm i with yeah. you. I think Samick should play. I definitely think Samick should play. I think Greenwood coming back in is a massive uh, plus for us because I think we'd all admit that he wasn't the main reason that we won the grand final last year, but his arrival was a massive catalyst for our upturn in form in the last two or three months of the season. That's an undeniable fact. So Greenwood's been a yeah, massive gave a boost. A massive loss for us. Um, do you know what, though, fellas? I just want us to go out on the pitch and be competitive. I, I hate to say this. I don't care if we get beat, but as long as we put up a good show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Warren, Warren, yeah exactly. Warrington are the form side in the competition, or one of the form teams in the competition. Everyone says, "Oh, is it going to be this year?" Well, this year it, it perhaps could be this year, but we've said it. We've said it many times before. 
if we got beat by 10 points, but we gave them a good game, considering all the problems, then I, I think most supporters or most realistic supporters would, would perhaps bite your hand off for that, to be honest. I know I would anyway. Do you, th- do you think the um, the bad blood advertising campaign around the game and also the uh, the fans popping down to the supermarket to get in, in, in Adrian Lamb's face about his missus' his spending habits and, uh, and what and what like, do you think that that might, um, that sort of stuff might actually spur us on to that competitive performance? And like you say, we want to see desire. We want to see intensity in our line speed. We want to see him smacking the shit out of him, to be honest, don't we? We, wanna, we don't want to muck around. We want to get hard in their faces. And if we lose playing that way, kind of like we did against St. Helens, it's not as bad. No, no. I mean, I, I, I've got a feeling this all this marketing nonsense. I mean, if Warrington win and, and and there's a full house there, they say it was great. Well, if they lose, then it's come and bitten back on the arse. I mean, what I would say is Lamb doesn't really have to do a team talk, does he? Because no, been posting all this stuff on social media and all that kind of stuff. Which do you know what? I actually think that's a bit unnecessary. Really, I don't think. We don't. It's not our derby. I think someone's quite rightly said it's just because they don't really have a derby anymore. So they're trying to make this into a derby. I mean, do we really care about them? We don't care about them, really. Uh, do we? Well, no, we do. I, but if our, I care. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, Saints are our rivals, aren't they? It's no good trying to say, oh, yeah, yeah no, Warrington are our rivals. Well, no, no, no. Just because Warrington haven't got witnesses, their rivals anymore, we can't just try and invent a rivalry, you know? So, um, so well, I mean, we played them. We played them in that epic six-game series last year, didn't we? Uh, no. So, uh, so there's a bit of that, I suppose, hanging over into this year. And we we beat them in two of the two of the three big games we played last year. We beat them, weren't we? Uh, didn't we? So, right, I, I've written down what I think my team's going to be for for Friday night. So, I want you guys to chip in with any objections to this. So, I'd go Zach at fullback. Yeah. I'd go Davies. Hankinson, Sargentson, and Gildart then on the left on the left wing. I'd have Williams and Samet to start. I'd have Shorrocks yeah. on the bench as cover for Hooker or halfback. I'd have I'd start with Club Lulawai and Flower up front. I want to go in with my intense defensive players up front, and I'd get those two ready for this one. I'd have Greenwood, I throw Lachlan as my back row. Then Hamlin, Bullock, Navarrete, and uh, Shorrock would be my bench. That's that's the way I go into this one. Yeah, that's, I, that, that's it for me. I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I've just I've got the squad, yeah. I'm at the 18 man squad, here, 19 man squad. Sorry, here in front of me, I, I, I would I would agree with that. To be honest, I, I would do exactly what you say. Yeah, exactly. The what only you. question mark for me is Escaray or, or, or Escaray potentially on the bench, but I think Shorrocks has been talked up by Lamb this week, so he might get his get his chance on the, off the bench and and see how he can do. So uh, yeah. and, and hey, you know every other halfback's getting a go. Why not Shorrocks? <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, do. Dare we do score predictions? I mean, oh, uh, <laughs> do. We'll we'll start with you first. What? Let let's do two things. Let's go rather than score predictions. Let's have a out of a hundred percent confidence levels of us being able to get a oh, win yeah. here. Oh, yeah, first try scorer. There you go. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Ooh, Charlie Hughes. Which Wigan is going to be first oh, try scorer? Yeah, really? oh, yeah. <laughs> Honest, I'll tell you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna go to, for the score honest. here, right? I'm gonna give you a you wanna you wanna you wanna hear it, right? Yeah. What it in fifty Wigan 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 twenty-five and no Matt McC- Matt McCauley, no Navarrete drop goal. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth, can you do better than that? I don't I don't believe you can, but let's have your score prediction anyway. <laughs> like I said earlier, if we can be within ten points then I think we'd have done all right, to be honest. And a lot of people will say, God, that's so negative. But I, d- I don't think it is negative. We're playing a form team in a competition. We are woefully out of form with a massive injury list. We're having to put square pegs in round holes in the back division. We've probably got not nowhere near our first choice uh, scrum half. You know, we, I, I think if we can, like I say, if we could just show a bit of pride and a bit of passion and, you know, we give them a good game. And if we lose by 10 points, I think, I think that's got to be progress. If we get absolutely stuffed by 30 or 40, then I think it could be really demoralising. And I think the next time I come on, I might be comparing it to Ian Millwood and things like that. But let's... Oh, let's... Oh, oh. Well, 
there's there's one thing the stadium well back at where which whichever they wherever they put the cabinet these days i don't know we've got the trophy though we're reigning champions we never were reigning champions in that crap season in 05 so right. so we've got that haven't we boys to hang our hat on but um I'm liking the variety we're getting coming coming through here. Spencer Thompson, Wigan 19, Wire 18, Sam at field goal. We definitely take that, won't we, guys? But then we get yeah. we had a comment there. It's just rolled off my feed. Uh, Stephen Roberts, we're going to get a wallop in. <laughs> there you go. Uh, um, <laughs> I I am um, on the Super League pod, which is my, my podcast I uh, do every week. I've not predicted Wigan to lose a game for over two years. Um, so even in our dire straits 2017 season, I never predicted us to lose a game during that run. I always thought next week was going to be the week we bounced back. And so far this week, I've been true to that too. Uh, this year, I've been true to that too. But I've got to say, this year, I've gone for a, this week, I've gone for a wire win. And I think it's going to be between 10 and 18 points, two to three scores. I think they've got on us. I just think they're a bit better. But I, like you, Gareth, I'd take a 10 point loss as long as. It's a, a physical, intense loss where we're just outdone by a couple of pieces of brilliance from some of their brilliant pay, players. That's that's wives might be uh, on the, uh, you know, getting jobs just like Adrian Alarm's rumoured to have had in times gone by. <laughs> <laughs> so, percentage out of 100 that we're going to win then, Stu. 0% for you? <laughs> Nil pour. Zero. Fat one. Sorry for being thing and that, but honest to God, eh? Honest. I have never been so relieved to have worked, and I feel sorry for you. Two two things, uh, Mark. Last week, Paddy Quirk would not have been giving you a beer bashing to get in the stand. And um, <laughs> to, to, being, to being lucky to be at work on the Saturday, watching it on the telly, mate, I've got a feel for you, mate. I felt hard sorry for you being there, buddy, honestly. Well, you know, we, we, we've got to do these things to uh, be able. To, I've got to do these things to be able to I afford know. to go to all the games. Um, yeah. But uh, so far this season, I've not missed a game, and I've got I've got it scheduled in that I'm going to be doing all right for the next few weeks as well. Why do I pick the seasons where we're doing crap to watch all the games? I don't <laughs> yeah, know, but there there we are, boys. I. I, I don't give us much of a chance, but I give us more of a chance than Stu Gareth. Thanks for your views as always, no um, and uh, and. Stu as well. Uh, it's been brilliant hearing some of your, Cheers, your takes yeah, and very fun. Well, well, yeah. Thanks for everyone for commenting along. We've had some good comments along there as well, as well as uh, Deborah Williams has possibly been getting a bit of an ear bashing, it looks like, instead of uh, George Williams. <laughs> That's a bit, <laughs> a bit of a worry. But uh, uh, yeah. hopefully we'll hey, see you all. Is Matt's girlfriend being on tonight? Matt's number one fan. Put no, on. no, we haven't. We haven't. I haven't seen any comments from Matt's number one fan so far, but I'm, I'm sure she'll be there no, on Friday be there. night, and be I'll there. be there. And lots of you guys watching or who watch this after the fact will be there too. So um, let's all be cheering, get behind the boys, yeah. and try and push them onto a win if we can. And uh, well, we need, we need all the help we can get. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everyone. See you later.